P. Massachusetts Massacre. Route to the Gold Cup. All this coming up on Horses and Courses. This is the OTB Television Network. One back, boys! Track Betting Television Network presents Horses and Courses. OTB Thoroughbred News with your host, Jack Wolpeseter. And now with a look at this week's news in the thoroughbred industry, here's Jack. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses, Belmont Stakes Week. And do we have our 12th Triple Crown winner looming on the horizon. We'll find out uh, a little bit after uh, 5.30 or so on Saturday afternoon as they run the mile and a half test of the champion. We'll talk a little bit more on the Belmont Stakes in the notes portion of the program. Uh, interesting week this week. Uh, of course, uh, Suffolk Downs in East Boston, the site of Skipway's latest triumph and also the site of Sonny Hines' latest rampage. So we'll go over that and see what old Skippy and Sonny are up to after their trouncing of rivals in the mass cap, a Massachusetts massacre, if you will. And we'll take a look at some good racing down in New York, some excellent turf races. And out in California, we had a good handicap as well. So a nice week, uh, glad you're with us. Let's load them up in the gate and start things rolling. We'll go down to Calder, Saturday afternoon, the feature race in Miami, the Azalea Breeders' Cup handicap. These are three-year-old fillies and a nice pot to run at, $200,000 in added monies. They're going the three-quarter of a mile distance. Bill Saltzman is in the announce boot, of course. Here's his call of the Azalea. And they're off in the Azalea Breeders' Cup stakes. Middle of the track, that's Cassidy that moves out for the lead toward the outside. It's Holy Capote. Jay's Hope moves up with Brack Drifter. Then to the far outside, it's Nancy's Glitter. A length and a half back toward the inside, that's Society Bell with Fantasy Angel. And a length to the trailer, Tasso's Magic Roo. They move up the back stretch through the half mile pole. Cassidy is clear by a length and a half. On the outside, Brack Drifter has moved into second position. Wide is the ball. Nancy's Glitter is third. Then to the inside, Holy Capote is fourth. It's a length and a half back to Jay's Hope fifth. Then to the inside, Fantasy Angel is sixth. Another length back toward the outside. That's Tasso's Magic Ruin on the inside, Society Bell. First quarter, 22 and one, past the quarter pole, the half and 45 and four. They move to the 316th pole in the Azalea Breeders' Cup stakes. They've got Cassidy to catch, leads by a length and a half. Down the middle of the track, Holy Capote's coming on second. Then it's two and a half lengths back to the inside. That's Fantasy Angel third, next Brack Drifter. They come to the wire, it's Cassidy and Jose Rivera the second. They take the Azalea, Azalea Breeders' Cup stakes. It was Holy Capote a clear second, close for the show between Fantasy Angel and Brack Drifter. Cassidy, three and a quarter length score here. Jose Rivera in the Irons. Uh, Petrina Manny Estevez won the Jasmine at Hialeah and now has three wins out of her last four starts. She's a daughter of Jolie's Halo and she just wires this bunch. But a nice ticket too, seven to one. $17 mutual on Cassidy. Holy Capote, best she could do was get second here. Fantasy Angel finished in the third position. Cassidy, six furlongs in the Azalea, one, 11, and four. Up to Pimlico on Saturday afternoon, the April run stakes at a mile and a half on the grass, a $50,000 added marathon for the disc staffers. Let's take a look at him. Here's Dave Rodman in Pimlico with the call. 
Miss North Beach just loping along easily on the front end. A length and a half. Smashing review continues to track second. Risque is next. Ms. Mazuma is trying to rev up on the outside of leading question there. And Tough Broad. There's only five and a half lengths first to last. Let's see if Prado can steal this one on Miss North Beach. Continuing to lead by a length into the far turn. Smashing review. Now nudged out for some run. The second spot, Risque leading question. Ms. Mazuma, a three wide sweep on the outside in the red cap. It's a length and a half more, and Tough Broad is a triller. Miss North Beach smashing review. Ms. Mazuma on the far outside. Risque, Tough Broad second last, trying to close now on the far outside. Tough Broad's got to come very wide. Leading question has dropped out of it. They sprint for home now. Miss North Beach is let loose by two. Tough Broad, Ms. Mazuma. Risque is next, followed by Smashing Review. It's Miss North Beach slowed it up early. Tough Broad's trying to come after her. Miss North Beach, Prado aboard. Two lengths clear from Tough Broad second. Risque third. Miss North Beach. Wire to wire. Well ready to win it. Second Risque, Tough Broad. And back to... Missy North. Edgar Prado gets the call for trainer Mike Dickinson. Says, Edgar... You put this filly on the lead because nobody's going to catch her. She'll just gallop him to death. That's exactly what she does. She'd been racing for 50,000 claimers in August of 97, the date of her last win. And now after a long layoff, she's sent off at 5-2 to two and just gallops around to a 2 and 3 quarter length score. Risque and Tough Broad, they'll be second and third. Running time, uh, Miss North in the April run stakes, 2, 33, and 2. All right, also at Pimlico over the weekend, we go from the marathon to the sprint, the gold digger turf sprint, five quick furlongs. Again, we've got fillies and mares, this time the purse, $40,000 in added monies. And again, here's Dave with the call. They're homeward bound now. Incredible Revenge, the leader on the extreme outside. Weathervane's trying to get some momentum going. Big Ego trying to close in in between horses as Rhoda Elaine is trying to tough it out there in the second spot. They're coming down to the 16th pole. Incredible Revenge, the leader. And on the outside, Rhoda Elaine. TJ's tough as nails. Incredible Revenge. Rhoda Elaine on the outside. Incredible Revenge takes all the heat to win it. Incredible Revenge. Eddie Sheridan up for trainer, owner trainer, Marion England gets her second in a row. The six-year-old mare by Rogers Revenge loves to go to the front. Yeah, she was in front last start at Garden State in a five furlong sprint for 35,000 claimers. Now they run it back in the stake, and here she comes. She gets the victory by a head and sent off at even money. Rhoda Elaine was second, and Big Ego was placed third as the original third place finisher. D TJ's tough as nails uh, was interfered there in the stretch uh, and was moved down to sixth. Uh, so incredible revenge, the winner, Rotor Lane, big ego in the 5 eighth time of 57 in three. All right, to Wilmington, Delaware on Saturday afternoon, the lighthearted stakes, a six furlong sprint for the Phillies and Mares, 40 thou the added purse. John Curran in the booth will give us the call. Bowl of Berries now opens up two lengths on No Bees and Make Me Conquer. Clandestine Call will have to go around horses and five more to the trailer torch. Half in 45 flat, and they've still got Bowl of Berries to catch. Leads it by two. Make Me Conquer in pursuit second. Followed by No Bees and Clandestine Caller. For long to go, and Bowl of Berries is hanging in there gamely. Leads it by a length and a quarter. Make Me Conquer is making a run on the outside. It's coming down to these two at 16th to go. Here comes Make Me Conquer to take on Bowl of Berries. And Make Me Conquer getting it in the final 50 yards. Make Me Conquer, Brent Bartram in the saddle for trainer Steve Brown gets the half-length score, was sent off at 7 of 5. Hey, the jock put this mare in a long, sustained drive, and she gets up for that half-length score. Bowl of Berries and Clandestine Caller, they'll be second and third. Uh, it is Make Me Conquer, and a pretty impressive performance Saturday, going the three quarters in 109-3. Sunday at Wilmington, Delaware, the Legal Light Stakes was the featured race. Again, we're at three quarters. This time we've got three-year-olds going postward. 50 thou is the added purse. Again, here's John 
with the call. Just over a quarter mile to go and five star deputies flying on the front. It opens up three and a half lengths on Thunderbow. It's two and a half more to Clabin's Gold. Gailey Boy cuts the corner, half in 45 and two. And it's still five star deputy winging it on the front end, leaves it by four. On the outside, Clabin's Gold full of run in second, but has a lot of work to do. A 16th to go and five star deputy and Bobby Colton won't be caught today. Clabin's Gold is closing well for second and Gaelic Boy gets up for third. Five-star deputy by two lengths, a measure two lengths. Bobby Colton just sitting there waiting for these other horses to come to him as he had this guy well in control. Clabin's goal won his last, uh, finished his second. Gallic boy finished third. All three horses, uh, strangely enough, sent off at two to one here in the legal light Sunday. But it is five-star deputy who went to the front and then Colton just measured the win as he goes to three quarters in one ten and one. All right, let's take our all right, let's take our first break here. When we come out the break, we've got action from Monmouth Park over the weekend, Churchill Downs, over to Bean Town for the Mass Cap, out to Hollywood Park and Belmont as well. Much more to come on this Belmont Stakes Week. Don't go away. Be right back after these messages. Ever thought of owning a pro team? Dream on! But you can still be a sports owner, thanks to the New York Breeding and Racing Program. You can't afford a major league ball club. This is a perfect alternative. You're the owner. You're the George Steinberg. It's pretty far-fetched to think that you could own a, a ball club or a hockey team or a football team, but it's really not out of the question if you have some success in life that you could own a thoroughbred racehorse. When the horse crosses the finish line, you think you won the World Series. If you live in the Capital District area, you can take the OTB Television Network with you wherever you go, 24 hours a day. In your car or at work, you can listen to what's going on with Capital OTB Horse Racing by tuning in to WVKZ Radio, 1240, either AM dial. You can listen to all the race calls and the results and the information just like you were watching the television network. And in between, you can listen to the one-on-one -on -one sports radio network. At work or in your car, tune in to WVKZ, 1240, on your AM radio dial. In Ocean Port, New Jersey, on Saturday afternoon, the Ocean Hotel Stakes was the feature for a sprinting on the turf at five eighths of a mile. We've got three year olds going postward here. Forty thou is the guaranteed first. Ken Warrington's in the announced booth this weekend at Mammoth. Is his call of the Ocean Hotel. They're on the far turn. It's Saratoga Halo off uh, opening quarter of 20 and four. They are flying at Saratoga Halo, and Dale Beckner looking for an upset, leads it by two lengths. They turn home. Maria's prospect in hot pursuit with academic award up on the outside, kicking in late down on the inside. Espresso circling up boldly. Here comes Soldier Field with a big run. Saratoga Halo, Soldier Field, and Rick Wilson taking charge. Soldier Field and Rick Wilson takes the Ocean Hotel Stakes. Boy, I'll tell you, they go quick uh, on this turf course. Uh, Soldier Field runs down Saratoga Halo, try to steal at a whopping price. Soldier Field just runs by that one for a three and a quarter length score. Rick Wilson in the irons for trainer Linda Rice. This is a son of Dixie Brass. It was his first turf try and first stakes win. He was third last year as a two-year-old on that WHAS stakes uh, behind favorite trick, you may recall. So Soldier Field, now a stakes winner on the grass at Mammoth Saturday. Saratoga Halo, the rank outsider, and a blow-up place price, 20 bucks on Saratoga Halo to place. She hangs on for the second spot. Then Espresso finishing in the show position, but it is Soldier Field just flying over that turf course. Look at that time, and that's not even close to the record. The record is 54 and 4. This is 55 and 4. All right, on Sunday afternoon, more zooming quick turf races at Monmouth. The Wolf Hill Stakes. Uh, we've got the older horses going post with this time, and they had enough of them that they could split the race. So here's Division 1 of the $40,000 guaranteed Will Hill again, Ken giving us the call. Around the far turn, it's special occasion by three lengths. Whitfield is second. 
from between horses, Mugabuck is third. Up on the outside, Matthew Slew from fourth. They turn home. In the stretch, special occasion, leading it by five. On the inside, my friend Will emerging into the second spot. Down to the wire, special occasion. My friend Will running late, battles on for third. But it's special occasion. We'll take first division of the Wolf Hill Stakes. His special occasion, a four-year-old by Cahill Road getting the victory, a front-running victory. Speed is this one's game last November in Florida. Called a, a finished up eighth in the Axtone, but had the lead and just faltered late. Now turns back after the layoff to 5 eighths. They're not going to catch this guy. Uh, and it raced as cheap as 35000 in New Jersey at Meadowlands in a winning effort last fall. My friend Will was second best. My Jeff's Mambo finishing in the show spot. <laughs> Another zip time here, 55 and one. A special occasion, winning the first division of the Wolf Hill Boy League fly on that course. All right, the second division was the ninth race on Sunday, 5 eighths, 40 guaranteed. Again, Ken Warrington with the race call. And it's Get My Glitter and Nick Sanagata by two and a half lengths. Getting away from power to pass. Creative tension. Tips to the outside. Also coming on late. Parklow, and then it's shoe in action in fifth. They turn home into the stretch here. And it's Get My Glitter, the one to catch on the outside. Parklow and shoe in action. Through the stretch, getting tired. Get My Glitter on the inside. Parklow, Get My Glitter. Parklow, a final surge with Chew in action. Get My Glitter and Parklow on the outside. Get My Glitter holds off Parklow and Chew in action. Get My Glitter. Nikki Sanagata gets the call from Gary Contessa and gets the victory here in Sunday's second division of the Wool Phil. Sent off at a very nice uh, price of seven to one pays seventeen dollars on get my glitter last raced out at detroit uh last time out and uh, finished up in a good second there just beating three quarters of a length was racing on the inner dirted aqueduct this winter for forty five thousand now a stakes winner six-year-old gilded son of glitter man of course stakes winner on the grass park low shoe in action second and third and again the time fifth Five and four, one second shy of the track record and speed, 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 speed on that Monmouth turf course. All right, from New Jersey, let's go down to Louisville, Churchill Downs, and check on the turf action there. Saturday afternoon it was the Louisville handicap. It was a mile and three eighths in distance. It's a hundred grander. We've got older horses, and we're looking for a Louisville repeater. Here we go with Kurt Becker's call of the handicap. And they're off in the Louisville handicap. Thesaurus was away alertly, but now Double Leaf moves right past him toward the inside at the entry to the turn, and Chore One comes away running in third toward the outside. African Dancer will be fourth in the opening strides, and then Cinch, who moves up a spot down toward the hedge. Double Leaf is the leader. He will set the pace. Opens up by better than two. Thesaurus goes next, and Chore One, the defending champ, is third toward the inside, just four lengths off the leader. African Dancer will rate from off the pace with Cinch trailing the field as they move through the stretch for the first time. One mile left to run, and they are pursuing Double Leaf, who has the lead by just over two lengths. Thesaurus goes out wide toward the center of the course. Chore One moves up with African Dancer in four in between those two and cinch restrained at the back as the field heads off toward the turn the first half was timed in 51 and two fifth seconds double leaf continues to set the tempo leading it to length and a half chore one much closer at this point than he was a year ago in this race is second by a neck African dancer is third on the outside two more lengths to thesaurus and cinch is content to trail the field as they make the move on to the back stretch so far, it's been double leaf through six furlongs in 117 and one. He leads it by a length and a half. Chore one, waiting to strike in second. African Dancer just off the pace now in third. Cinch is fourth, and Thesaurus finds himself fifth and last, heading on to the final turn. 
Double Leaf still looking for a challenge. Now Chore One picks it up a bit and takes toward the outside. African Dancer will go out toward the center of the course in third. Cinch and then Thesaurus is last. Coming to the quarter pole, Chore One mounts a challenge. Double Leaf still has the lead and Double Leaf angles out way wide off the turn. African Dancer alertly has to change lanes to the inside along with Cinch and through it all, Chore One comes up the leader at the eighth pole, but African Dancer is running at him toward the inside. Thesaurus is third. African Dancer, Chore One. Thesaurus is third. Chore One, defending champion again, wins the Louisville Handicap. Well, indeed, we got a repeat of Chore One. Won this last year and comes right back and wins it again this year. And they all but handed it to him. I mean, look at the time for three quarters of a mile. 117 and one. They're walking. Pat Day is loving it. African Dancer was sent off at two to five and just had no response when Shore One and Pat came to him in the stretch. The Saurus finishing in the show spot. They walked early but flew home to eat, to set a new stakes record in the handicap. Shore One gets it in two minutes, 17 seconds. Flat trained by Hal Wiggins a five-year-old son of cuisine. All right, uh, from Louisville, Churchill Downs, let's take our next stop in Lone Star Park down in Texas. A couple of Texas bred races on Saturday afternoon. First up, seven furlongs for the Texas bred fillies and mares in the two Altazano handicap. 50 guaranteed is the purse. Listen to John Dooley give us his call of the two Altazano. The opening quarter went to 22 and 1 as they head toward the far turn. Mastery's Gamble still in charge. Mastery's Gamble leading it now with three furlongs to go from Two Step and Tony. Ronald Ardwan getting into Two Step and Tony for more speed. And on the outside is playing with Leo, matching strides with her. And behind a Mastery's Gamble, Shady Creek Sex Secrets has dropped away. And Lou Milou is coming up on the far outside as they come toward the top of the stretch. And Mastery's Gamble threatening to go the distance. 3 16th out in the two out to Zano. And Mastery's Gamble is looking good as Weldon Cloninger looks back to see the rest seven lengths behind past the 16th pole. Who my Lou, two step and Tony, and playing with Leo, fighting for second because here's Mastery's Gamble. Mastery's Gamble and Weldon Cloninger with a masterful ride. Mastery's Gamble, Weldon Cloninger up gets a six and three quarter blowout victory here. Tommy Morgan, the trainer, they sent her off at five to two. They could have gone around again and again and again. This Texas bread is just, by mastery, is just too good for these others. Two Step and Tony playing with Leo. They'll be the second and third best here. Mastery's Gamble goes the seven panels, 122 and three. That was the eighth race, the ninth race. The male's turn to go post with in the assault handicap. Seven furlongs again, 50 guaranteed. And again, here's John with the call. As they enter the far turn with Daggett's Crossing on top. Daggett's Crossing still there, leading it to Mocha Express. Ronald Dardwan and Daggett's Crossing. Marlon St. Julian with Mocha Express coming toward the corner pole. Then it's EC Mister looming large down and toward the inside, running third, followed by Malted on the outside, dropping away as IR Sharp, Orbit's Revenge, and West Texas last. They're in the stretch. And it's Daggett's crossing in front as they come down toward the last eighth here at Lone Star Park. EC Mister now finds a gaping hole to run through. Mocha Express trying to hem him in at the 16th pole. Daggett's crossing looking for the line. Mocha Express and EC Mister. Mocha Express surging late. Mocha Express gets there. Mocha Express denying Daggett's crossing. At Mocha Express, a neck victory, a hard earned neck victory. Marlon St. Julien in the irons aboard the seven to five fave for trainer Tim Hodder. Marlon was stalking throughout and had him measured, but really he got after this guy to get up in time and reward the favorite players there on Saturday afternoon. Daggett's crossing the eight to five, uh, almost favorite finishes second. These two put on a pretty good battle here. EC Mister will be the show horse. Mocha Express goes the seven panels, just a tick slower than uh, the 
mayor counterpart, the race before, Volcker Express, going in 2-22-4. All right, second break coming up. When we come out the break, we've got our action from Hollywood Park, a couple of nice handicaps, including the Californians, some grass racing, then Belmont Park, of course, very nice grass race. The Sheepshead Bay was run on Saturday afternoon. And over to East Boston for the Boston Massacre, the Massachusetts Massacre, and the irrepressible trainer, Sonny Hine. Don't go away. More to come. Be right back after these messages. Off Track Betting is taking wagering on many tracks across the country, from New York to California, Philadelphia to Kentucky, New Jersey to Texas, and you can wager on any of these from the convenience of your own home simply by opening an OTB phone bet account. You'll receive reliable, courteous, and prompt service seven days a week. And with our fully computerized system, it's guaranteed your bet will be received the moment you give it to any one of our OTB telephone betting agents. Convenience? That's the whole idea behind a telephone betting account. Stop into your nearest branch for more details. A day in Saratoga is not complete without a visit to the National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame on Union Avenue in Saratoga Spring. Get an insight into the tradition of great thoroughbred racing from the beginning of the Saratoga track in the 1800s to the present day. It's an experience you'll treasure forever. The National Museum of Racing and Hall of Fame on Union Avenue in Saratoga Springs open year-round. For more information, call 1-800-562-5394. Saturday afternoon before a sun-drenched crowd of 17,774 over in East Boston. Crowd up from last year, but not as many as they had in 96 when Cigar was over there. But a delightful afternoon, a 14-race card of all stake, allowance, and handicap races put on by the racing department at Suffolk. And We'll start you off. We've got three of them for you. We'll start you off with the James B. Mosley handicap. This race used to be the drum top uh, stakes, but was renamed when Mr. Mosley, who literally resurrected this place from the graveyard uh, back in 1992, uh, passed away this past April. So in a very, very fitting tribute, a turf race named in his honor. We've got Phillies and Mayors going postward. It's a mile and a sixteenth. It is a hundred grander. Larry Colmus in the booth at Suffolk. Here's his call of the James B. Mosley. Field of seven here in the Mosley. They're off and running in the James B. Mosley handicap, and they came off to a good start. It was dating game from the inside out well, but now DeSormo sends aspiring to the front, and aspiring and dating game battle it out past the stands. It's three back to Flurry running in third. Jerry Bailey has the favorite Tressorier in fourth, about six off the lead. Then Turk Appeal, Victory Chime, and Preacher's Nightmare will do her running from the back of the pack as they move into the clubhouse turn. The leader here is Aspiring, under Kent DeSormo, Aspiring in front by a length and a half. In second position on the clubhouse turn is Dating Game, and she's right there in second. A length and a half back to Fleury. Tressorier is right on her outside, moving comfortably. Tressorier sticks her head clearly into third now past Fleury. After that comes Turk Appeal and Victory Chime and two and a half back to the trailer Preacher's Nightmare. Down the back stretch, Aspiring, still the one to catch here, leads it by just a length. Dating game prompting right there second. Tressorier under a confident Jerry Bailey just being nudged along now in third and she's edging up closer. Fleury has the inside running in fourth position on the far turn. Now Turk Appeal and Victory Chime are moving together. Victory Chime coming quickly now. Takes third on the fire turn and here she comes with her run. They're a quarter of a mile from home in the Mosley. It's aspiring in front. Here's Jerry Bailey and Tressor Yair to take her on. Tressor Yair has taken the lead with a furlong to run and aspiring has no answer for her. Tressor Yair is moving away. Victory Chime and Preacher's Nightmare are running late, but they're running late for minor shares behind a very talented filly. Tressor Yair and Jerry Bailey win the Mosley by six. Well, Chris set uh, Tressor Yair over to Suffolk, and we saw her on Preakness weekend win the Gallaret down at Pimlico. This daughter of Leapard is just going from strength to strength to strength. I'm going to see her in grade one company next time out. Jerry Bailey in the Irons. Sent off at three to five and just rolls home to an easy five and a half length score, owned and bred by Mrs. Alec Head. 
Preacher's Nightmare was second. Victory Chime gets the third spot. Mile and a 16th on the very term firm Suffolk Turf Course Saturday, equaling the track record of 144 and 4 for Trace Soirier. All right, that was the eighth. The ninth race was the Mass Cap, the 59th running of the Massachusetts Handicap. The purse on the race because of the appearance of triple grade one winner skip away and triple group one winner Puerto Madero is up to 620,000 in guaranteed monies. It is a mile and a furlong grade three event. Here's Larry with the call of this year's mass cap. Standing in line, they're off in the mass cap and the five broke beautifully. Skip away came out well from the inside. He's going for the lead with long shot Fleet Eagle. And now these two are head and head past the stands. KJ's appeal will sit just off of them in third. Grider keeping him in a contending spot. About two and a half lengths off the leader. Puerto Madero drifting just a bit wide into that first turn. Puerto Madero's about six lengths behind. And on is inside is Black Forest in the back. They went the opening quarter in 23 flat and skip away. Gets away from Fleet Eagle now. Skip away will do his mass cap running on the lead today as he heads down the back stretch. He's opened up by two. Fleet Eagle is second. KJ's appeal third on the inside. Puerto Madero is kept fairly close, a lot closer than last time. He's about five off the lead and two in front of Black Forest. It is skip away. He's run a half mile in 46 and 2 and he heads past the half mile pole with a two length lead kj's appeal is now up to second puerto madero is three and a half behind in third desormo starting to nudge on puerto madero then black forest fleet eagle is dropped back around the fire turn jerry bailey still hand riding skip away two and a half lengths in front of puerto madero and here he comes now he's into second KJ's appeal is back to third. Three quarters in one, ten and one, and the real running starts now. Jerry Bailey has set down skip away. Kent DeSormo all over Puerto Madero, trying to chase him home, but skip away just kicked away from Puerto Madero, and he bounds past the 16th pole like a true champion. The best horse in America wins the mass cap again. Skip away, won it by five at the wire. Well, 130 pounds, Jerry said it didn't much matter. Felt like 126 or 128 Then He just went to the front because there was really no one else that wanted to go with him. Just loped along, loped along, and just has a parade to the wire, winning in hand by four and a quarter lengths. Puerto Madero and Kent, they're coming off the quarter pole, uh, set his horse down, made a little run at him, and actually was running as best as he could, and, Jerry just opened up the notch on Skippy, and away he went to his sixth consecutive victory, and now just is 1.5 million shy of Cigar's record. Uh, 1.6 behind Cigar, I should say. Puerto Madero, very good effort for Dick Mandela and D. Hubbard as they were on hand to watch this horse's performance and perhaps size up Skippy for gentlemen who naturally they are connected to for the next battle which will be on the 28th of June in the Hollywood Gold Cup. KJ's appeal was uh, second last time out in New York behind Sir Bear gets the third money. Skip away. New track record and boy that track was souped up pretty good on Saturday afternoon. 147 and one for Skippy. And now it's all weight parades the rest of the season. No more handicaps. And uh, the schedule looks like this. The uh, aforementioned Hollywood Gold Cup, June 28th, the Del Mar Classic, then back to New York for the Woodward Jockey Club, and then the Breeders' Cup. And uh, Sonny, of course, uh, always trying to compare Skippy with Cigar and w welcome the 130-pound impost because, of course, that's what Cigar carried to victory uh, back in 1996. So Cigar, 95-96, skip away, 96-97. So for four straight years, Suffolk Downs Massachusetts Handicap has presented the leading handicap horse in the country. And Skippy was just in, on as much on the muscle after the race as Skippy was during 
the race. Uh, he was throwing out terms like calling Bob Baffert uh, because of his uh, refusal to run Silver Charm against Skipway, a coward because he wouldn't take 130 pounds, said he was ducking him, said he gets no respect. Uh, it just, Sonny, you got to let your horse do the talking. He's a wonderful animal, and by you saying all these things, it just takes away. Uh, maybe there's a, an ulterior motive. Maybe he's just trying to goad Baffert into a battle here. But Baffert is standing his ground. We won't see Silver Charm for another uh, week or so when he goes in the Stephen Foster, which, ironically enough, last year was a $150,000 race. Then this year was bumped up to $500,000. And when Baffert said he was going to run in it, they suddenly moved it up to $750,000. Who is he going to run against? And does he already have a weight package guaranteed to him by the people at Churchill Downs? Uh, Baffert, of course, was Silver Charm, a fresh horse from Dubai, passed up the Pimlico Special. That was uh, five weeks after Dubai, I believe, then passed up the Mass Cap, and is going to pass up the Hollywood Gold Cup. So uh, you might uh, say that Sonny might have a, a point or two here to be well taken that uh, he has announced his schedule and Baffert knew it and really has worked the silver charm around it. Jerry Bailey feels is not a horse in America that can beat Skip Boy right now, but we certainly would like to see Sonny just hone it down a little bit and let his uh, horse speak for himself and uh, perhaps we can get all these horses together and Gentleman looks like he's going to go in the Hollywood Gold Cup, so there's uh, two out of the three anyway. But a great Massachusetts handicap for Skip Boy. All right, one more from Suffolk on Saturday. The Suffolk Downs Breeders' Cup Sprint Handicap. 200 added, six furlongs. Kelly Kipp was sent over from Boston for Alan Jerkins. You knew what was going to happen on this speed favor and track. Again, here's Larry's call. They're racing in the Suffolk Downs Breeders' Cup Handicap, and Kelly Kipp is out fast. Purple Passion on the inside will gun it with him early, and these two battle for the lead. Then it's Wire Me Collect, two and a half behind them. Trafalgar and Bluegrass Beater trying to stay close as well. Five lengths from front to back. It's Kelly Kip on the outside, and Purple Passion at the rail, head and head through a quarter in 22 seconds flat. It's actually all not a fast pace into the far turn. Kelly Kip gets away now, three quarters of a length, Purple Passion, forced to check and we'll have to find some racing room now. Here comes DeSormo with Wire Me Collect on the outside. Trafalgar's in fourth and Bluegrass Beat is fifth. They're moving to the top of the stretch with Kelly Kip to catch. A half mile in 45 flat. Purple Passion's not done yet. He's coming right back battling gamely. Wire Me Collect's in the middle of the racetrack. How long left? Kelly Kip holding on to the lead. Purple Passion and Wire Me Collect chasing him home to the 16th pole. But it's Kelly Kip. Kelly Kip is clear. And Kelly Kip and Joe Luke Samin win the Suffolk Downs Breeders' Cup in 108 and 4. Once the doors open, this race was history. Jean Luc Samin puts Kelly Kip on the front end, has him double bent in half. They made him three to five. The folks over there. I'm not stupid. They could see the way the track was playing, and he just strolls in for a three and three quarter length uh, score. Hobo Farm and Alan Jerkins getting the money. Hey, there's our New York bred, who very rarely runs in New York. Why me collect? Uh, does close a little bit of ground, so that's a good effort for this one. And Bob Kamak and Kent Desormo was riding. Why me collect? They get up for the play spot. D. Wayne's Trafalgar finishing in the show position. Kelly Kip, a laugher, goes the three quarters in one, oh, eight, and four. All right, Suffolk, let's go out to Southern California and take a look at their races on the weekend card. Phillies and Mares, Saturday afternoon in the Milady Breeders' Cup handicap, mile and a sixteenth, $200,000 is the added purse on the race. Uh, is Luke Krybosch, Hollywood, with the call. <laughs> Off and running in the Milady Breeders' Cup Handicap. 
and one lost the rider. Bell's flag lost the rider shortly after the start as Corey Nakatani took a heavy tumble. The field heads into the first turn now. I Ain't Bluffing has got a short lead, bothered early by the loose horse with Fleet Lady on the inside. Alzora's right there, three deep to the outside. A gap of four more farther back to Real Connection, who's settling down now in second last, and Tuxedo Junction is at the back of the pack early. They're the opening quarter in 23 and 3 fifth seconds. And the loose horse looks to be out of harm's way on the far outside as I Ain't Bluffing leads the way under a nice hold. Three parts of a length in front. Alzora right there tracking in second place from the outside. Fleet Lady up the inside rail, edging her way up a closer third. Then the gray reel connection. She's six off the pace, racing a clear-cut fourth now. And it's seven farther back to the late running Tuxedo Junction, who's ten links off the pace with a half mile left to go. Through the opening half in a moderate 47-second flat, Chris McCarran dictating the pace out here on the favorite. I ain't bluffing in front by three parts of length. Alzora moving up to put some pressure on her from the outside. Fleet Lady racing third to the inside rail. Real connection puts in a nice bid three wide to the outside and she's moving steadily now and from the back of the pack comes Tuxedo Junction. The race tightening up at the top of the lane. Six furlongs in one ten and four. I ain't bluffing still the head in front. Fleet Lady will give her a test from the inside. Alzora driving in third. Real connection fourth by five and Tuxedo Junction. I ain't bluffing still with plenty left in the tank, and I ain't bluffing McCarran. Ask her the question now. I ain't bluffing half a length in front of Fleet Lady, who's battling gamely. I ain't bluffing Fleet Lady. I ain't bluffing tough as nails. I ain't bluffing wins the Milady Breeders' Cup handicap. Well, the speed duel that was supposed to materialize between I ain't bluffing and Bell's flag didn't because you see Bell's flag unseats Corey Nakatani, and that takes care of her. Uh, Chris then has a pretty easy stroll of it. They made her four to five. She gets her second in a row for trainer Ron Ellis, an eighth win out of 13 lifetime starts, a daughter of Pine Bluff. Fleet Lady, real connection, finishing second and third. Loose horse, second one we've had on the program uh, this week. We saw uh, Sport Devere get loose in that division of the Mammoth race, the Wolf Phil, earlier on the program. And actually, finish in front of everyone, but of course that doesn't count, so a rarity here. A couple of loose horses on the same week. The horses, of course. I ain't bluffing. She sure isn't. Boy, what a nice mare she is. Gets the victory for Chris and trainer Ron Ellis in a minute. 42 seconds left. Sunday afternoon, a prep for the June 28th Hollywood Gold Cup was held at Hollywood Park. The Californian handicap for the older horses at a mile and an eighth, $250,000 guaranteed purse monies, featuring the return of Deputy Commander going up against Ron McAnally's mud route. Let's take a look at him. Here's Luke again in Inglewood with the call. Off and running in the Californian, a perfect start. Mud route breaking on top, joined quickly by Worldly Ways in second. Deputy Commander gets a good spot to the outside third. Mountain Bike fourth, Al Baja now moves down towards the inside. And don't blame Rios at the back of the pack. Around the turn, Worldly Ways has taken the short lead now. Worldly Ways in front, three parts of a length. Mud route to the outside is second. Al Baja up the rail, a closer third. Mountain Bike's in tight quarters in fourth. Deputy Commander's got him bottled up now. Deputy Commander found out four wide around the first turn and a gap of five farther back to Don't Blame Rio. 23 and 3 for the opening quarter. Wheeling to the back stretch. They're tightly packed up front. Worldly Ways head in front. Mud route now applies the pressure from second. Deputy Commander just stalking the top pair from third. Now Al Baja just two and a half off the lead on the inside and fourth. Long shot mountain bikes racing fifth by seven more. And don't blame Rio and Eddie Delahousse patiently at the back of the pack. Four and a half furlongs to go. The opening half mile was 47 and 1. Worldly Ways still the neck in front. Mud route and Deputy Commander the favorite right there, second and third to the outside. Now we've got basically three across the track. It's four farther back to Al Baja, who's losing touch with the top three. It's a gap of two more back to Mountain Bike, and Don't Blame Rios tries to stoke it up from the back. Six furlongs in 111 flat still. Worldly Ways head in front of Mudrod. Deputy Commander coming gamely three wide from third. Seven farther back to Mountain Bike and Al Baja. Top of the stretch now. Mudrod sticking the head in front. Whip coming out on Worldly Ways. Deputy Commander gears it up on the far outside, down to the final furlong. Mud route shaken up now by Chris McCarran. Mud route has got the lead. Deputy Commander tries to wear him down. 
Dixon, game lead deputy commander's not getting to him, and Mudroud goes on to win the Californian. Mudroud and Chris McCarron by nearly two. Well, last year as a three-year-old, trainer Ron McAnally said this uh, son of Strawberry Road was the best three-year-old he'd ever trained. But uh, through one reason or another, the horse always had some chinks and just couldn't quite get on track. Uh, tried him in the Malibu at the end of the three-year-old season, was fourth in that race. Went through the Strube series with a couple of seconds in the San Fernando and the Strube, you might recall, behind Silver Charm. And then uh, they ran him in an optional claimer uh, back in March, rather than going in the big cap on big cap weekend. And the horse just aired by seven. Then tried the Oaklawn Park handicap, finished fourth there behind Precocity. So Ron gave the horse another month off, runs him back in another optional claim up for 80,000. And Mud Route just runs away by 10. Now comes back here in the Californian and gets a very nice two length score. Sent off at a four to five for a second win in a row. And you gotta think, this sets up uh, this guy very, very nicely for gentlemen, for Skip Way, for whoever, if he's good enough, in the Hollywood Gold Cup. Deputy Commander, good effort here, coming back for his first start since the New Orleans handicap debacle, where he was up the track at 80 cents to the dollar. So a good race under his belt for trainer Wally Delasi. And if he stays healthy, I would have to think he'd be pointed for the Gold Cup as well. Worldly Ways, try to steal it on the front end, runs creditable enough and gets the show money. Mud route, another win. See him in the Gold Cup. Goes the mile and a furlong in a minute. 48 seconds flat. And the ninth race, Sunday at Hollywood. Another one of our marathon turpers. This time the Phillies and Mares. Mile and a half. 150,000, the guaranteed purse on the Estropod stakes. Again, Luke will give us the call. And there, off and running in the Estropod. Sharp start for Angel Face to the front of the inside, joined quickly by Miss Ladybug to the outside, just a darling moving up a closer third. Proud Philly kicking back into fourth on the inside, Miss Universal's racing fifth by two, then Society Dream. And Halea Kayla's at the back of the pack, six links off the pace around the first turn. Miss Ladybug has gotten to the front, she opens up by two. Angel Face patiently back in hand, racing second, just a darling's racing in third. Then to the outside, Miss Universal, five links off the pace now in fourth, Proud Philly. Hugging the inside rail, racing fifth by two more, followed by on the outside Miss Universal, then it's Society Dream, and Helia Kayla's at the back of the pack. Past the stands with just over one lap left to go. Miss Ladybug, under a nice firm hold, leads the way clear by three. Angel faces second, the quarter clicked off in 25 and two. Just a darling's tracking the top pair from third now. Proud Philly on the inside is racing fourth, Miss Universal to her outside. She back to Society Dream, and Helia Kayla at the back of the pack. Round the clubhouse turn they go miss ladybug nice and easy up top leads the way under victor espinosa by nearly three now angel face starts to cut into that margin some second just a darling on the inside is third and it's miss universal moving up three wide on the outside of proud philly at the rail and society dream and a gap of two back to halia kayla who's now 10 links off the pacemaker six furlongs in 115 and four good trip up front so far for miss ladybug who leads the way clear by two angel face second just a Darling now has to pick it up and moves up on the inside. Miss Universal next by two more. Proud Philly six links off the pace than Society Dream. And Halea Kayla, they're starting to pack up up the backstretch. Just a darling sent through on the inside of Miss Ladybug now by Gary Stevens. Miss Ladybug still the neck in front. Just a darling turns up the pressure from the inside. Angel faces right there and a good striking spot in third. There goes to Sormo and Society Dream sweeping up on the far outside. Proud Philly still with four to make up and Halea Kayla around the far turn. Miss Ladybug still there, been there every step of the way. Three parts of a length in front, Miss Universal second, Society Dream driving three wide in third at the top of the lane. Miss Ladybug cutting the corner and heading for home. Miss Ladybug clear by a length and a half, Miss Universal second. Here comes Proud Philly on the far outside. Miss Ladybug running her heart out. Here comes Proud Philly. Proud Philly hitting the front leg for Miss Ladybug. Proud Philly gets up to win the Estropod. Proud Philly wins it clear by two. Well, a very nice Sunday afternoon for trainer Ron McAnally and jock Chris McCarron as they win both stakes out at Hollywood. 
In the Astropod, a proud filly comes on for a two-length score, sent off the eight to five favorite. She was second, just beat a half in the Yerba Buena at Golden Gate back on the ninth of the month. Now comes back here and gets the Sunday feature. She's a four-year-old daughter of the French stallion, Linemy. Finishing second, we have a tie. There's Miss Universal and Miss Ladybug, who backed everybody up, get a share of the place monies. But it is Proud Philly, the convincing winner, going the mile and a half in two, 28 and three. All right, from Hollywood, let's come back to New York and take a look at their action. And again, a marathon turf race for the Phillies and Mayors. The Sheep's Head Bay on Saturday at Belmont Park. Mile and three-eighths the distance, 150 the guaranteed purse. Tom's got the call of the Sheep's Head Bay. And they're off. Born twice and gastronomical. Away in good order. Natalie, two is out third, and Sweetsy, four wide, heading for the turf. Maxine takes up a position down toward the inside at the back of the pack, along with Colonial Play, as the field makes that long run into the first turn. Sweetsy, three wide, and now up and after the lead. Gastronomical backs off, and right alongside her, it's Born twice, who's now third by three. Natalie, two is fourth. Maxine settles into an easy beat at the back of the pack, just to the inside of an unhurried colonial play. Sweetsy's in front and in hand, the opening quarter in a dawdling 24 and 4 fifth seconds. Jorge Chavez with a good hold of the front runner, Sweetsy. They're just loping along at this juncture. Here comes Gastronomical on the outside, and she's also hard held. 49 and 1 fifth seconds for the opening half mile. Moving down the back stretch, Sweet C short lead, Gastronomical loping along second. On the outside, Natalie two, coasting in third. Farthest out, Colonial Play now advances to fourth. Maxine down on the hedge, rating in fifth, and born twice as the trailer. Sweet C Gastronomical and Julie Crone makes an early move with Colonial Play. They run three quarters and one 14 and four. In the meantime, Maxine is down on the inside of Natalie two as the field moves into the far turn. Less than four furlongs remaining. The leader is Sweetsy ahead. Colonial plays second by two. Gastronomical third. Jose Santos has maneuvered Maxine into a good striking position on the outside. They're now third. They're coming to the top of the stretch. Colonial play in Sweetsy head to head as they hit the quarter pole. Maxine looms just in behind them third. Gastronomical is fourth as the field turns for home. Colonial play's got a narrow lead, but Maxine is now beginning to hit her best stride. And here she comes on the outside. Sweetsy's in there with the fighting chance down toward the rail. It is Maxine in front. Maxine the leader. Sweetsy is second as Colonial play fades in the final furlong. It's Maxine in front. Sweetsy fighting on Gamely, but she'll be second to the classy Maxine, the winner by a length. Sweetsy was second by four, and Colonial Play was third. Well, some similarities here with Maxine, a five-year-old daughter of Cozine, winning the Sheep's Head Bay Handicap for the second year in a row, as we saw Shore One win the Louisville Handicap for the second year in a row, and both five-year-olds, uh, both uh, offspring of Cozine. So that stallion having a very, very profitable weekend. And Maxine, as you know, is just uh, on her way. If she stays healthy and uh, we don't get any more of these foreign imports like Raya Fan last year, who she couldn't quite handle, she is on her way to perhaps an Eclipse Award. Maxine just ran down this field with Jose in the irons for trainer Tommy Skeffington for the length score. Sweet C tried her darndest, but was no match for the one to five favorite. Colonial play will get the show money. Two minutes, 14 seconds flat uh, for Maxine as she gets her third win in a row. And Sunday afternoon, the Jaipur handicap at Belmont. Seven for a long sprint for the older horses. A $75,000 added purse here. Bill Mott sending elusive quality back with just six days rest. Uh, the Colt last raced on Memorial Day in the Met Mile and was just horrible. Never raced on the turf before. Let's take a look at elusive quality and Jerry Bailey in the Jaipur. And 
they're off. Exasperating springs from the gate. Zaim is away second. Indian Rocket third. There goes Bristling. Flashing early speed toward the inside. Up the back stretch. It's Zaim and Bristling going head to head early. Exasperating third. Elusive quality is fourth on the outside. Play smart fifth. Indian Rocket between horses sixth. Strike zone seventh. Optic nerve five wide in eighth. In between horses, Gray Raider is ninth by five. Then it's St. Casey's ribs and Fortitude trails the field as they race for the far turn. They tear through a hotly contested quarter there in 22 and one fifth seconds. It's bristling a short lead. Elusive quality now moving to the lead on the outside. Just in behind them, it's Zaim now racing in third. Optic nerve far outside, fourth. Exasperating between horses, play smart toward the rail. By the back, Ray Raider. Indian Rocket about six or seven lengths from the lead as they come to the top of the stretch. Long shot, bristling on the inside, on the outside, elusive quality. Play smart, set down for the drive third. Optic nerve on the far outside, fourth. Exasperating his fifth. It is elusive quality, grabbing a short lead from bristling at the eighth pole. Three and a half lengths back. On the outside, optic nerve. A late run from Fortitude, who's moving too late. They're coming to the finish. It's elusive quality, and a stubborn bristling elusive quality wins it by a head. Well, Vilmot decided that elusive quality uh, could run right back on six days rest. Uh, he didn't show much in the Met Mile, to put it mildly. He was buried by 23 and a half lengths uh, with Meg. He put Bailey back on the horse, who had won two in a row aboard this five-year-old son of Gorn West before the Met Mile. Never been on the grass before. Obviously, he likes the lawn here as he gets the head victory. Finishing second, we had Bristling, who was at a price and runs a terrific race, uh, just missing there. Then Optic Nerve gets the show spot. Uh, elusive quality, heads up training move by Mott, probably just walked him all week, maybe galloped him once. Goes the seven panels in 120 and four. Okay, that takes care of all of our replay action. Now right into our notes department. Of course, here we are on the eve of the 127th running of the Belmont Stakes with the Triple Crown in the balance. And it looks like Real Quiet has not scared away any opposition whatsoever. We're going to have probably a full field of 12 horses uh, to go against uh, Real Quiet on Saturday afternoon. And we've got some footage of Real Quiet as he worked at Churchill Downs on Tuesday, then Wednesday morning, was loaded into an Omni Air Express jet, and here you see he's landing at uh, Kennedy International Airport the late Wednesday morning, and then off the plane into his van, and then an escort out to uh, Belmont Park where he's walked around the shed row there and put in his stall to relax and await his moment with destiny. And of course, uh, accompanying real quiet, the full team Trainer Bob Baffert, owner Mike Pegram, and Kent DeSormo, all on that flight to Kennedy from Louisville, uh, making a very festive occasion. And of course, all uh, the usual uh, barbs and jokes uh, going along with uh, Baffert and Pegram as they are well enjoying this uh, quest for the Triple Crown. Uh, as for the competition in alphabetical order, We've got Basic Trainee, he's gonna try him again. Classic Cat, Hahnemann Highway. Uh, then we have Grand Hot Wells, Grand Slam, Limit Out, who had not such a great work uh, this past week. Parade Ground, Raffi's Majesty, uh, Real Quiet, of course, Thomas Joe, Victory Gallop, and Yarrow Bray. Now, Grand Slam will most probably be entered, and uh, Lucas, although still on the fences, we're taping midweek, will probably run Grand Slam. He says the horse is training well, so that will be our 12th uh, runner in the field. Uh, the bet format for the Belmont, win play show, exact is a late double and trifecta wagering, 527 uh, the post time for the test of the champion. An excellent card in New York on Saturday. Stake races, the True North, the fifth race, just a game of turf with Phillies and Mares, race six. Reva Ridge with Coronado's Quest, the seventh race. The Manhattan Turf with Chief Bearheart, the eighth race. So an excellent lineup of stakes. Our other races we will cover on the program next week. From California, the Cinema and the Malaya Stakes. 
and the Cinderella and the Gamely. Churchill Downs will take a look at the Fleur de Lis, the Fort Worth and Mesquite uh, down at Lone Star, and of course all the other races from Pimlico, Calder, and Monmouth as well. Going to be an excellent week. We'll wish real quiet, a good, safe trip. And let's see if he is up to winning the 12th Triple Crown in racing history. We'll see it all next week. So, as always, stay tuned right here to your OTB TV radio network station where you get the most complete coverage in thoroughbred racing. Until next week, Jack Wolf is here. So long, everybody. Enjoy the belt.